and welcome back to Sharks Happen. On today's show, we are going to go over an attack on a swimmer, on a snorkeler, a couple swimmers actually. We're going to go over an attack, very recent one, this year on a diver, and we're going to go over a, a very odd case. We're going to call it, what were you thinking? But not just because of the, inter the interaction with the shark. This guy is interesting and he's worth sticking around for, so I hope you do. It's going to be a great show. Okay, we're going to go over our first attack, and that is going to be at Ballston Beach, which is in Truro, Massachusetts, and the date on this attack is July 30th of 2012. Chris Myers, 50 years old, he and his son JJ are out and they're doing some swimming at Ballston Beach. They're swimming out at about 3.30, heading out to a sandbar, and they're about 400 yards off of shore, and they're in a channel. So they stop to rest and tread water in a channel. So they're both treading water now resting 400 yards from shore. The depth of the water in the channel is 15 feet. Chris and his son are about five meters apart, so about 15 feet apart. Chris is grabbed by the leg and he's tugged down and he's tugged temporarily under the water. Now the shark has both of his feet in its mouth. So he's got both his feet there. He had to free, I believe it was his right leg and he was able to kick the shark four times. Now after he kicked the shark four times, the shark let go of his other foot, um, lower leg actually, and then surfaced and it surfaced between both him and his son. And the onlookers on the beach ended up saying that they saw the shark fin, a big black shark fin, pop up between Chris and his son. And luckily, shark just went on its way and Chris was able to get in with his son and get his wounds fixed up. He ended up needing stitches on him. He had lacerations to both of his lower legs, uh, but he didn't have the usual, I didn't hear about the usual hands, defensive wounds. Sounds like it was pretty quick and once he got his leg loose and kicked it a few times, that was it. I wouldn't think it was trying to feed. Uh, maybe it was just testing him out, see what he was. and it, didn't want to bother with them after that, and maybe after being kicked. I usually don't think that matters. And if a shark is, you know, a big shark, if it was a big, great white there, uh, and it's hungry, it's not going to care that you're hitting it or kicking it or doing anything. I don't think there's much you can do, uh, barring getting a hold of the eyes or the gills, something like that, really sensitive. So uh, that's what happens with, with Chris Myers in this situation. It's an attack, it's not an attempt to predate, and they're saying that they think this was great white. They're not sure of the size of it. But with all the pinniped populations that are exploding over there, um, I would think that it's probably a great way to grab them. But it could be something else. I mean, you never know. It could be like a uh, sand tiger shark grabbed a hold of his leg or uh, some other kind of an offshoot shark that doesn't normally eat people. Really, sharks that I would call man eaters. There's probably about four of them and I'm throwing in uh, the oceanic white tip with the other ones. I don't put the whaler, the, the bronze whaler in with that because it's very rare to have a bronze whaler consume a person. So to call it a man-eater, I mean a potential man-eater, yeah it's a potential man-eater but it doesn't choose to do so. So that leaves the tiger, the great white, uh, the bull and then the oceanic white tips that are the ones that I would worry about. Um, the other ones, if they're out to bite you, you know, it's going to be bad, but it's usually not going to be they're going to eat you. Uh, that's the attack on Chris Myers, and we will move on. Okay, now we're going to head over to Mackinac Landing, which is over in Maui, Hawaii, and the date is October 27th of 2012. Mariko Haugen, she is 51 years old, and her and her husband are out doing some, they're doing some snorkeling, observing sea turtles, but they're on their way back to the beach from doing that. That sounds like they're swimming back to the beach and uh, they have their snorkel and, and she hears some screams from others around her, uh, probably most likely on the beach, it sounds like. And they're telling, warning her of a shark on its way. And this is not a small shark. There's a 10 to 12 foot shark heading for her. Now, Mariko says that she had taken Taekwondo and this got her prepared to be able to punch this shark. And the shark came at her and she says she got two punches out. She punched it 
successfully with the first punch. The second punch went in the shark's mouth, so it ended up slicing her hand when, of course, when you miss and it goes in the mouth like that. So she ends up with some cuts on her hands, but after she punched that twice, the shark turned away and left her alone. <laughs> Lucky for her, I mean, 10 to 12 foot tiger shark is no joke. That's what Vladimir Popov, Popov ran into. So uh, she ends up getting out she ended up with uh, some puncture wounds on her leg. So it sounds like when the shark was coming in, it ran into her kind of open mouth and, and kind of stabbed her with some of the teeth. But it doesn't say there's any cuts, just puncture wounds. That's why I think it just you know, hit her with the teeth as she punched it and it kind of stopped its momentum and then it just turned and went on its way. So she ended up with 60 to 70 stitches between her hand and her thigh where the shark ended up coming in contact with her. So uh, a very lucky ordeal and very minimal, I guess you could say, injury from running into a shark that's coming straight at you, a tiger shark 10 to 12 feet uh, in length. And she's a small woman. She looks like maybe 100 pounds total. So. Uh, Good for her fighting that thing off, and and a commenter on the la on the last video yesterday had mentioned that you know you need you need to fight for your life, and that's what you need to do. Uh, you need to swim for your life. You need to fight for your life. Once the shark is 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 set on attacking you, even with Vladimir Popov, people were yelling at him. It says in all the stories to to swim, and he was frozen with shock. You got to you got to swim in that situation. You got to do everything you can. So you ever end up in, in a shark situation, uh, holding still, keeping your eye on a great white type thing, uh, that works up to a point. But once that point is passed and it turns into that shark is attacking, you need to do everything you can. That's the attack on Mariko Haugen, 51 years old. An attack, not an attempt to predate, 10 to 12 foot tiger shark, and we'll move on. Okay, this one. Okay, now we're gonna head back over to the Mediterranean. We are going to Sardinia, and that is in Italy, and the date on this attack is March 29th, 2015. Eugenio Masala, he is 43 years old, and he is a professional diver. And they don't say the time of day, distance from shore where he's diving at. Uh, but they do say that his dive is only supposed to last 15 minutes. And he fails to return. They sound the alarm and a search takes place. I don't know how long the search was, but uh, five days after he disappears, they find his body in 70 feet of water. And again, I don't have the information on how many feet of water he was diving in at the time, but it sounds like he was found in a different area. Uh, could be the same area though, but in 70 feet of water with Injuries, bites to his arm, and, and massive bites to his side, the side of his body. Uh, so then the coroner went ahead and they, when they looked into this, he had, no air, he had air in his lungs. He had no water at all in his lungs. And then they launched into a, an investigation, what they call it, which they do with shark attacks to, you know, go ahead and determine, I guess, legally that it was a shark attack. I would imagine it was for legal purposes they do that. So uh, that ends up being probably a great white, another one of those uh, great whites, this one that didn't finish the job. But to have that massive bite on your side, it reminds me of Lewis Bourne and those kind of attacks where it's just one massive hit and then you hit the road and the damage is already done. It happens, you know, when they bite them on the leg, it can happen all the time too. Uh, these things are such powerful fish that <laughs> that's why I won't take my chances. An attack, uh, an attempt to predate, don't know what kind of shark. Uh, being that it's the Mediterranean, I would say that it's almost 100% going to be a great white. They probably have whalers over there and, you know, uh, I don't think the, uh, the smaller uh, mackerel sharks, the poor beagles really mess with people. So I would I would pretty much put this at a great white's feet right now, but I'm not gonna put that in the thing right now. We're just gonna put, you know, shark. Okay, now real quick, we're gonna head over to Leftovers, and that is a spot over in Waimea Bay, and that is in Oahu, Hawaii. The date is February 19th of 1992. Brian Adona, he is 20 years old and he goes out to do some boogie boarding and he just disappears. They, they say late afternoon and he's out there, he disappears. Uh, they never do find his body, but his board washes your shore. And it's got a 16 inch crescent shaped missing piece to it that has serrated edges like shark teeth. 
Uh, so uh, they presume this is a fatality from a shark, probably a tiger shark being in Hawaii, but they still do have great whites over there. Uh, a lot of people think that, you know, Hawaii, it's automatically a tiger. Uh, they probably do get quite a good amount of great white attacks over in Hawaii. Uh, probably more than they get over in Florida for sure. So uh, you can't always think that it's a tiger. It could be a great white, but it's most likely a tiger. So that's our attack on Brian Adona, an attack, a predation, and you know, a total fatality as his body's not recovered. And that's how it'll go, up, go down and I am going to put it under a tiger shark, and if we hear different later on, I mean, they should be able to tell from the board. And they say species not identified, so they actually can't tell from the board and the bite marks. So uh, we're just stuck with not knowing the shark. Large shark, 16-inch bite mark shows that, large enough for our spreadsheet, so he goes down, attack, predation. Okay, now we're going to get into a little bit of an odd uh, report. I run into odd reports here and there and when you see stuff that's a little bit different than what it normally is, whether it's structure, information, uh, time that you find this stuff out, and these next two are going to have some of this stuff. So this one, we're going to go over to Point Reyes and that is over in California. The date, October 1st, 2023. Felix and Ja, Felix and Jay. Uh, N-J-A-I. He is out doing some swimming. He went to a friend's uh, wedding and the groomsman was out swimming with him. There's three people that go out swimming. Did they give the time of day on this one? Um, I couldn't find time of day and it doesn't surprise me once we get into this. But he goes to the water, I guess him and his two friends camped out overnight near the beach and then they went out swimming the next, more, the next day, sometime. They're in the water, the three of them, and Felix is attacked by a shark. All the stories I see are telling some other friend, it sounds like a different friend, one that wasn't there that witnessed it of Felix's, telling what happened. Now why the two that were there aren't the ones telling what happened is one of the unusual things to me and not real unusual, I mean it's fine, you, you don't want to talk about it, but what this other friend says is a little bit odd and I want to make sure I read it right so that you get it. He says, uh, the, this friend of Felix says that uh, they, the three of them went into the water and a shark came up and grabbed Felix by the neck supposedly. And he threw in the word supposedly. I don't know if, you know, he speaks a different language or something and throws in words. But supposedly it was like, well, what is that about? And came up, grabbed them by the neck, and both of them disappeared under the water. And that's what happened. Now, the other two men that were there supposedly ran out of the water, turned around, looked saw a commotion, saw blood, and there was nothing they could do, and then they went and got help. They did launch a search for him that I believe was about a three, four day search, and they still have not uh, listed Felix as a fatality from a shark. Now, I think that's because of uh, the way that the laws are over in California. They, they, they don't have a body. They can't prove that he was, you know, killed by a shark. They can't prove that he was killed by anything. So I don't know what they're going to go through when they do that with missing persons like that. It's probably a, a thing of time. Uh, but like I said, it seems like there was a two-day passage before anything was mentioned about this guy's identity. And maybe that's the two friends being in shock and not being able to not want to talk about it, not being able to talk about it. But just, you know, that with the word supposedly uh, and the fact that it's not one of the two friends, it's a different friend telling this story. Those three things are, and there's not a lot of information in there. There's almost as much information on what they were doing prior as far as the wedding and camping out than there is about what really happened in the shark attack. And this is going to be a recurring theme when we get into these newer shark attacks because of the way the investigators do them. And uh, we're going to get a, one of those next here with the last attack. And this one is going to be the diver that was decapitated in Mexico uh, J January 5th of 2023. We'll get into that next. Okay, now we're going to head over and finish off our unprovoked attacks at Tobari Bay. That is in Mexico, and the date is January 5th of 2023. Manuel Lopez, he is out diving. He is diving for a strange name of a mollusk. Uh, he's diving for something, collecting these mollusks. And there's background that, you know, 
why he's out there kind of by himself. There isn't a lot of fishing going on uh, because there were sharks in the area and they were paying these people not to fish. And then all of a sudden the lack of, I guess, having supply made people need to fish and he needed the money and he went fishing. So he's down in the water. He's in 10 to 18 meters deep water. So he's in, you know, 33 to about 60 feet of water. So a big range, but I'm sure it's like mountainy down there where they collect these off the side of whatever they're uh, down there with. And we don't know, you know, how far he was from the boat. We don't know how long he was in the water. We don't know what time it was, I don't think. And we know that he was bitten. He was bitten at least once and that removed his head. And it sounds like both his shoulders were bitten in the process. It sounds like this is a 19 foot great white shark. So coming in, biting down on his head, it sounds like it got his head and, you know, parts of his shoulders also. But, you know, you could go ahead and say, because all they say is that his head was removed and both shoulders were bitten. They don't say whether it's in three different bites, if that's two different bites, or if he's, you know, it's simple to say his head was removed and his shoulders were bitten in the process, one bite. Um, that's what I'm assuming happened in this situation, but I, I, I don't like to have to assume. The Miranda attack is almost the identical attack. He jumped in the water and all of a sudden the guy saw the shark at the top of the water's tail smack as he went in and took and bit his head off in that process. And the other one that was, you know, had his head ripped off that he was diving down there was on old hookah gear and that's one that they heard the metal clanging because they had a recorder going on and they actually have recording of when the shark hit his helmet and uh, so we have a lot more information from the older attacks than we do on this 2023 attack. Now another problem with this attack because there's only one source of this whole thing. Nobody else has ever looked into this or talked about it. It all goes back to this tracking sharks and tracking sharks is looking into a telling us about a January 5th 2023 video um, attack on a video he did. So he puts out the video like two weeks later. I think it was the 23rd. So almost three weeks later he finally gets his video out and now people know the story and I'm like well First, I asked him in the comment section on this thing, how long have you known about this, this attack? You know, shouldn't you get that? I would think you should get that information out to the public immediately, but obviously that doesn't happen, and maybe it doesn't matter because there's not much information uh, as far as what happened at all. That's one of the weakest reports I've had. And like I said, he gets into telling me about how you know, they're given $400 stipends per month to the fishermen because they're scared of the sharks that are in the water. Well, why don't you tell me what happened with this attack instead of telling me what happened to get this one guy in the water? <laughs> I, I don't understand it and it's frustrating. And that's what I said about newer attacks and how you get less information than you used to get. You get non-pertinent information and the information on the attack is very light. So that's our attack. Um, on Manuel Lopez, I think it deserves a lot more reporting than it's gotten. Uh, it seems like some of the shark investigators are just like the media and they don't ask questions anymore. They just listen to what somebody says and that's it. No questions, no further information. Uh, news is no longer news, it's just and with some things as little as possible. And that's what seems what, like we, what we got here. So. Stick around, we're going to get into a very interesting story for the end of this, What Were You Thinking? Okay, we're going to finish off the show with What Were You Thinking? We're going to get into Captain Paul Boynton. This is 1877, uh, 1877 story, so this doesn't go in our files. But this guy is interesting, and I couldn't, I couldn't locate the actual attack, this, this, and it's a provoked attack. He was actually attacking the shark. It was a reverse situation. But... It's because of all the things this guy has done that were in the papers back then that are just ridiculously nuts that, <laughs> that, that I think it just buried this, this attack because he wasn't bitten in the process. Uh, the shark was actually wounded pretty bad by a knife that he was holding on to. So we're going to get into this 1877 attack, March 16th, 18, 1877. Now, first of all, Captain Paul Boinkin, he is not a captain. He's an honorary captain. Now to explain what he does, there was a suit, I believe it was in Minnesota it was designed. Uh, manufacturer was, it was a watertight rubber suit, 
a, designed by a Pittsburgh manufacturer, a rubber suit that was really good sealed in, so insulated suit from the cold. And this guy would wear the suit and he would use a paddle. And he would paddle his way, he paddled across the, uh, the English Channel, paddled his way across just in this suit. So when he was using the suit, Somebody had asked him, somebody from, I guess a war was going on, and somebody asked him to take a torpedo, so he took his little suit, and he took, and he, and he rode his way out to this enemy ship that was out there, enemy uh, watercraft, and attached a torpedo to it, which ended up sinking it, and they ended up making him an honorary, ca honorary captain. So this captain has never ran a boat, I don't think. He just paddles his way around the waters. He's gone down lengths of rivers and stuff. I mean, I was seeing all kinds of things that he was taking and paddling his way up, you know, along. So. Uh, what ended up happening here is a crazy story. He goes out on a fishing expedition. I think they're shark fishing. And they take two, what do they, what do they call them? Caracas or something? I forget what the names are. But the ship lets them out on those. And then he jumps into the water in his suit with his paddle. And he's got his knife. <laughs> and he's looking at the other little boats out there. And he can see that there's a shark underneath one of the boats and he says it's darting side to side um, going around the boat but it's keeping its eye on him and he's in a black black rubber suit so it's keeping an eye on the black object in the water this shark makes a beeline for him now 1877 they all thought that sharks had to turn on its side to bite you so it says the shark turned on its side and went after him which is funny because it probably didn't it probably just stayed normal and went after him because back then they didn't know what they could do with their mouths and be able to bite they thought they had to turn sideways because they only had a little opening so they put in a turn sideways and went after him when the shark got to him he had his knife and he's the one attacking the shark that's why this is provoked he wants the shark to come get him he said oh he was nervous about it when just before the shark came at him knowing what was going to happen as the shark came at him he was able to slice it in the bottom of the in the bottom of the mouth and it was bleeding good and swam kept going straight it went right at him got cut in the mouth and kept going and his the tail ended up smacking him in his side. So later that evening, he goes to a reception that they have for him. This guy is famous back then. I mean, this guy is world known back in 1877. He ends up going, and he's in the papers from 1877 to 1910 at least. I mean, this guy does some things. And uh, he goes to this reception they're holding for him, and he's there, and he faints. He passes out. And when the doctors come, they, they tell him, you got three busted ribs. That shark's tail that hit him broke his ribs, three of them. <laughs> and he didn't know it, went to a reception, and ended up passing out from the pain. This guy's something else, I'm telling you. Uh, so I was looking for that shark stuff, but just these other stories, and I'll put a few little stories, little clips in there. Uh, but he is all over the place in the papers back in the 1800s, late 1800s. And he's not even a captain, and every story calls him Captain Paul Boinkin. <laughs> it's just funny all the way around to me. So. Uh, what were you thinking? Trying to cut a shark <laughs> with a knife. Trying to take a shark out in its water with a knife. <laughs> it's not going to happen. So uh, that's our story of Paul Boinkin. Uh, that's the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to try to get back tomorrow maybe with a single attack episode. But until the next time I see you, remember if you go into that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.